Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to be adding a simple score system to the project. So at the moment we have a playable level. In fact from the previous video we have two. So we may as well start adding things like the scoring system and that will be a nice introduction to the widget system inside of Unreal which is how we will be controlling most HUD systems, menus and things like that. So to get started, if we go to the Blueprint folder, we need to right click in the Blueprint folder and go down to the User Interface section. And down here we can see that we have something called a Widget Blueprint. So these are fairly similar to the standard blueprinting systems. In fact, they'll have a graph inside of them, kind of like the blueprints we've already looked at. But these are specifically designed and catered to work for, as I said, menus and HUDs and things. So we're going to need to give this one a name. The naming convention for Blueprint Widgets is BPW. And then that will be followed again by the underscore and the name. So we're going to call this HUD. So we have BPW underscore HUD for the Blueprint Widget HUD. And this is purely going to be here to display the score. So what we want to do is in here, we're currently in the Designer tab, as you can see over here. And this is where we'll be setting up the look and design of the, the widget itself. So really all we want in this one is really, really simple, and that's some text. And under the common options over here, we can see that text is one of the, the common items. So we can just drag that in to our screen. Now what this is doing, this is representing a canvas, which is essentially the screen. So for this, we wanna make sure this is set to full screen and we're gonna set the screen size to be a full 1080p desktop setup. Now we can see this kind of flower looking thing over here. This is our anchor system. And on the right hand side, we wanna drop the anchors down and just set this to be centrally anchored. With the text still selected, we're gonna to go to alignment and we're gonna set this to 0.5 on the X and the Y axis, which is left, right, up and down. So using the central anchor and doing that, we'll make sure that this is com completely based on where the center of the screen is. And then the position, we can zero that on the X and the Y and we'll see that the text drops down to the very middle of the screen. So now we have a nice way to keep this very tidy and not have some random offsets with the uh, the location. Now for the size, this doesn't matter too much. We're just gonna hit size to content, and this is gonna be based on the, the font and the text and everything else that we set up in a moment. But I'm just gonna drag the position on the Y axis, which is up, and I'm gonna drag that down into a minus value so that, that will make this go up the screen because obviously screen-based coordinates, we have zero, zero over here. This will go over to one and one. So to get something to go up on the screen, you need to drag it down on the Y axis. And then finally, we're going to change the text here. This is just going to be a demo text. So let's say that we've got a thousand points. We want to come down to the font to make this look a little bit more interesting. So I'm not a big fan of Roboto Bold, but the light text looks pretty nice. And then if we change the size of this to something like 72, maybe. There we go. So we're going to have a nice big score indicator on the screen. Now the color, you can play about with the color and opacity as well. So we can change the score to be colored whatever you want. Sticking with a very minimalistic theme, we know that we have a dark background. I've put this up in the sky so it's not going to interact with the floor. So sticking with maybe three colors, I could either make this blue, red or white. So I'm going to stick with white so it doesn't clash with the sky. And uh, when this is displayed, it's going to be easily viewable against the, uh, the skybox itself. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is how to actually add this into the world. Because at the moment we've created something, but obviously we've not done anything with it. So if we press play, we're not going to see the HUD. To rectify this, we're going to open the player blueprint. And what we want to do is when the game first begins, we want to add this HUD system to our viewport. And quite simply, we want to call the node create widget. OK, so we're going to get our create widget node. And this has two different arguments. The first one is owning player, which isn't too important in this. Uh, in this case, we're not actually going to use that. The one that we're interested in is the class. And you can see here, if we drop that down, the classes we have are BPW underscore HUD and then a default one, which is just the user widget class, which is what the HUD actually is, a type of. So we're gonna use our BPW underscore HUD that we've just made. Now the next thing is we're going to get the return value. So the thing that we've just plugged into this is going to be stored as a value. And we want to promote this to a variable like we've done previously, so that if we needed to reference this later, we have a reference to the HUD system that we've created. So I'm just gonna call this BPW underscore HUD as the name of this variable so that we know exactly what it is later on. And then when we have that, we can drag off of here again and we want to add the, the HUD system to the viewport or the screen. So we can see that we just type add to view and we'll get the add to viewport option. Select that and this will now, when the game first begins, create a widget of type HUD that we've passed in. It will store that as a variable for us to use later in case we needed to update something with it and then it will add that to the screen. So if we press play now, 
we will have our score appearing. And obviously it's got the default value of a thousand because we have no logic or anything updating that. It's just going to present the value that we've input. So to add the logic to our HUD system, what we want to do is we will select the text that we've added. Now this text by standard isn't a variable and that means that we cannot access it in logic if we go over to the graph system up here next to the designer tab. And we need access to that for us to be able to update things in Blueprint to change the value. So what we want to do is quite simply, with the text selected in the designer, we want to make sure that this is variable tick box is ticked. Now I'm also going to come back over as well down here to the left hand side. I'm going to press F2 here to rename this and I'm just going to call this the score text or just score. Just so that we know what this is in case we started adding new values or uh, visual aspects to our HUD system. So now if we go back over to the graph, we can see what we didn't have just now is now appeared, and that is our score variable. And what we're going to do with this is we are going to create a function so that we have full control over this, and we're going to call this update score. Now, just for anyone who's already aware of creating blueprint widgets or widget systems in general inside of the Unreal Engine, you might be aware that you have the option to bind the text. And this basically creates a function automatically for you which is called all of the time and I generally don't like doing that it's something that you can do and it just means that it will predefine a few things for you so it's still a normal function and it's just going to constantly get and return a certain value now the problem I find with that is that you don't have full control over that like I mentioned it is running all of the time whereas if you create the function yourself it leaves that up to us to call this as and when we need to update things so we'll be seeing how we can do this in a, in a moment, but I just wanted to cover that in case people either come across this later and wonder why I've done it this way, or if you're familiar with this, uh, creating widgets and things, and again, you're wondering why I've done it this way. So that's why. So what we want to do with this though, is we will control drag in the score. We will drag off of here and we'll just do a set text command. So we're gonna set the text of the score and we will plug that in as the only thing we want to do. Now, the way that we're going to work out the text, though, is we want to get a reference to the current player. And the way we can do that is if we go back to our event graph on the event construct, which is essentially the event begin play that we've seen in our other blueprints, we want to cast to a type of blueprint, and that's going to be our player. So if we do a cast to BP underscore player, and we just want to make sure that is the that the current player in the game, so we're going to get player. And the way we do this is we'll get whatever the current player pawn is. So we'll do a get player pawn. We see this. Now this is a predefined value. This isn't something that we've made. This is the, when you query what this is, it will be the avatar or the pawn class that the human player is currently in control of. So we want to make sure that that is our BP underscore player class that we've created. And if it is, so when this is come back as a success, we will then promote this to be a variable that we can track. So we're going to set this to be our BP underscore player. So now we have a check happening here just to make sure that we've got the right class set for the player to control. And then if it has, we're going to store that. And that means again, like we've done previously, we can use this anywhere else in Blueprint. So if we go back to our update score, we can now control drag in the player Blueprint reference. And what we want to get from this is the actor location. So if we type actor location, we can see here we can get actor location. And then if we split this down, so we'll right click on the, the, uh, the pin and we'll split the structure pin. That's going to give us the vector three location, the X, Y, and the Z, just as the float values, because we're only interested in one of these. And that will be the X axes. So if we just see what this does, first of all, uh, again, I know that this is going to be a little bit of a problem. So if we just drag this in though, and we want the current X axis, so how far the players traveled on the X axis to be the score. So we'll plug that into the text. This will do a conversion from a numeric value to a string or text value. We'll hit compile and we're going to get a small problem here. Um, and that's just because if you were following along, I've made a binding. So we just want to make sure that we remove the binding here and then hit compile because I'd already deleted the binding function. And there's actually one more thing that we need to do. So we're going to go back to the graph, we'll go to the event graph and we need to make sure this is why I said that we need we're in complete control of the function being updated or called. So if we press play now, we're not going to have anything happen because we haven't actually called the function that we made. And this is more of a performance point is with most HUD systems and uh, widgets, you probably don't need certain values to be called all of the time. So I've just found it's a good habit to get into only calling functions as and when you need them. And to do that, we're just going to drag in the update score function and we'll just call that on the event ticks. So in this case, we will actually be calling this all of the time. But if you imagine widgets where you had like a, a weapon system or an ammo counter, if you were to just bind something, that binding is called pretty regularly if you do it on a standard binding. I think it's almost like an event tick, so it's being called so many times per second. Um, and you don't need the ammo to be updated that often. What you'd want to do 
is you'll create every time the player fires the gun you'll create a single call to update that the ammo needs to be decreased or if they pick up ammo that you'll do a single call to update that the ammo needs to be increased so that, that's why i'm doing it this way but now if we hit compile and we go back and we press play we can see that we have a few problems so the score is going up really fast and it isn't being rounded so we get quite a messy looking score system. So to fix this, we'll go into our update score function. And what I've done there is I've just double clicked on the function I want to go into. I'm gonna move this back as we'll need a little bit more space. Now the first thing is the value, I think it's worked out in centimeters. So these are going up really, really fast. It's looking a little bit like you're getting points for doing nothing. So the first thing I want to do is divide a float by a float. And I'm just gonna do a simple division of 100. So we'll divide the result by 100 and then once we've done that that's going to fix the issue of it being a really high score for pretty much not moving we want to then just simply round the returned value and we're going to round that and then we will take that and we'll plug that into the text so this is doing a lot of converting at the moment this is taking the value that we get it's rounding that down it's then converting the float into an integer and it's then taking that integer into a string value and what we probably want to do is just plug that straight into the set text there so that we're not also converting this back to a float because at the moment we're then converting this back to a float into a string so we're just going to remove that one and we'll do it straight into the text box so we have less converting going on but that's really the tidiest way you can do this unfortunately so if we hit compile when i go back in and we can see there we go we have a more realistic looking score system and it's going up in whole numbers so it looks a lot a lot more pleasant to actually to read but with that done there we go we have a working score system and it is definitely now shaping up to be a little bit more of a game we still don't have a complete fail structure but we will be adding those in very very shortly and now that you've completed this if this is your very first time in the unreal engine you've now seen and actually used blueprint widgets and you've created your very own hud system as well so as i said do feel free to come around in here play about with things like the color add some extra text if you wanted to and play about with the canvas for now though i'm going to leave this video here as always if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful then please do leave that like and share the video around that is always appreciated don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel and as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time